Right. Today we're going to go over timing uh, an X3 engine. <clears throat> it has uh, become more difficult, I guess, or I don't know if there's really even an explanation online on how to actually time an X3 engine and just the things that go along with it. So to start, this is the basic layout. You got your crank gear with a, um, a guide, basically. So this is non-tension. This is the guide here. Make that a little thicker. This is the tensioning side guide. So a hydraulic tensioner, which is fed oil to pump up a piston, is on this side. But mostly we're going to focus on the non-tension, non-tensioning guide side. So regardless of what camshaft you have in this thing, it is impossible for it to be any different than a factory camshaft or, I mean, you could have like square lobes on this thing. It would not matter. So mainly because you lock the crankshaft into place with the, the lock in the front of the block into a notch in the crankshaft. That locks the crank into the service position that you would time any engine. So that locks number two at TDC when you put the lock into the crankshaft. So the, the chain now is, because we're timing off the non-tension side guide, the chain links, I mean you can count the links, will always reach say straight up on the exhaust gear as where it is 90 degrees off some some engines actually you time with like different colored chain links on the chain but on this engine they just basically put, lock the crankshaft into a service position and then you line up the exhaust and intake gears to set time but regardless of what the cams are doing event wise that does not matter at all because the chain links will always be the same to the actual exhaust and intake gear so the same distance you know straight up and down of chain links from exhaust to intake the same amount of chain links from the crankshaft to exhaust gear so i think what happens is you know so like this is like a representation of a cam with a lot more lift and duration so the camshaft will rest in a position, you know, so say on a stock cam, it's a lot smaller, which is this dash line. You know, the lifter could essentially be in this position, which would allow the engine to be a little more free with less duration on the camshaft. As the cam gets bigger, it's going to put more force on the lifter bucket um, at a wider range of time. So I, I think this is probably what's causing a lot of trouble for people. So what would happen is you set the gears in, you set time, and then you look at the gears and they're off. You know, because say the camshaft just so happened to rotate this exhaust gear this direction. And I don't know, maybe, yeah, it'd probably rotate this one this direction. But there's going to be slack on this chain now. So what you would do is, you know, this is locked, everything's set. You're gonna to try to rotate your intake cam to pull the slack out of the chain, and then these gears should rotate into position. So like in resting position as possible, it is not timed correctly. So we're, we got an engine that we're gonna time, you know, from like, you know, he's putting the cams in it right now, but this this should never be a problem regardless of what camshaft you have. So it, it the other thing to note here is these the exhaust mark and the intake mark on the actual like the cam cradle, there's a lower cradle, and then let's just say there's a lower cradle and an upper cradle. And that's where the cams are gonna go through. There's a mating line directly in between the, the two cradles where they would connect. That is like the reference line for here. So you'll see inside these gears the, the mating line of the two cam cradles 
coming together, that's where you're going to line this up at. You could lay a straight edge, you know, through the center of this bolt and this bolt, and then make sure that these two marks are very close to that, that spot. But we'll, we'll time this engine now, but I basically wanted to draw it out, tell you that it is impossible. It does not matter what camshaft is in this thing. It is completely dictated by the length of the chain. So unless your chain changed length, it should not be any more, it should be no different than when you pulled it apart for timing wise. So this engine is, it, it is a stock cammed engine. It's not like anything crazy. So you got the tools for that gear, the gear bolt. Like, I guess let me get some guides. Does that thing have a... Uh, yeah. Okay, so the notch in the crank to lock the engine in the service position is, you know, like, this is outside the engine, obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> When the engine rotates, to number two TDC, basically it's going to be sitting in this position. Number two is at TDC. This will now allow you to lock the crankshaft into its position. So number two is straight up. This, you know, you use this to do other things with the engine too. So the tool, you know, this is the, the tool that we have. Like it allows us to take this, you know, stator side stuff apart and uh, time the engine. So. The, I drew marks on here so it's easier to see in the video. So exhaust and intake, there's lines here. So I just kind of threw the chain on it. The guide, you know, this guide would go in. So you can, um, I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's a lot of slack in this chain right now. And the exhaust tooth is very close to its its position so i would say that this is actually going to be not in time just by how much slack is in that chain so you know just sitting here actually we're, we'll put some tension on this thing and watch how far it rotates it actually rotated like pretty good there wasn't as much slack as i thought so the exhaust cam looks like it's actually in time just tossing it in here. So crank lock is in. This is all the way in. Crankshaft can't move. Exhaust gear is in time with taking the slack out of that side. Right? So the intake is in time, but we got slack in the chain. So this thing is off. So I'm going to take this out. Rotate this a little bit to give it a little more slack and see if I can jump this. Where'd my tool go? Oh, sorry. It's on it. Oh. There we go. So. So now. What I'm going to do, because it is a little difficult in video, to you have the tensioning stuff? I'm just going to put a little lube on it. That goes in. Hydraulic tensioner. Spring, which assists the act of tensioning when there's no oil pressure. So sometimes when you start up the engines after they sit for a while, you notice that little clacking sound. It's basically this waiting to get oil pressure and it kind of the chain kind of slaps off the um, the chain kind of slaps off the actual tensioner itself so we're going to spin this thing in there I don't know if it's actually possible at this point, even with absolutely no oil or tension on the tensioner, to skip time. So, 
even though it sounds terrible, I don't think that it can cause like any major issue. So crankshaft's locked. I moved this, so I'm gonna actually put, you know, like I was saying, we're gonna put a little bit of tension on this and you should be able to see the cams move. So they, they moved a bit. Now they're in like absolutely perfect alignment. So just rotating, you know, they were sitting in a position that was not like in like great alignment. And if the engine's decked, you know, like if you have like the, if you're affecting the length of the chain basically by thicker head gaskets, decking the head, decking the block, this number can change a little bit. And if you have the experience and you want to play with it, that's when you would basically pull out uh, adjustable cam gears and, you know, like actually degree the engine in. Um, it is a bit difficult with a hydraulic bucket setup uh, because, you know, you're, you're checking valve timing events and a bucket is going to soak up some of those events in the beginning. But it, it, it's possible to do it that way. But I'm going to take the, so this thing's basically in time now. I'm going to take the crank lock out, rotate the engine over. You got this, uh, By the way, if you want to like easily spin the engine over, Mitsubishi 4G63 crank bolt works perfect. So the engine drives the clutch forward uh, in terms of counterclockwise. So if you want to drive the engine in the way it normally rotates, you first need to tighten this bolt up pretty tight. And I should have done that with the crank lock. We're going to do that. So two revolutions of the engine will get you back in time. It's a four-stroke engine. All right, so I'm going to watch the notch. center of the notch and the two marks lined up you can install this thing to make sure but the example would be if you got like so say number two right now the this lobe is contacting the lifter kind of on like a lift state you know like the the lobe is compressing the valve or it's like just starting to come off of it. If you had more duration, the cam would undoubtedly be putting force this way. You know, the lobe is on contact on the back side. If it was bigger, it would be pushing the engine out of time. And this, the... I guess the intake cam would be fighting a little bit, but it would be, I guess this lobe would be pushing against it too. So I think that's mainly what's happening when, when guys put the bigger cams in there is it, the engine just so happens to line up and the timing events just so happen to line up that it's putting force on the cams, putting slack on the non-tension side that's causing problems. So you definitely wanna like, you know, put a little bit of tension to pull the engine back in time on that that cam gear so that's basically the procedure some guys use the tools to lock the cams in um it's not obviously it's not required to do and a, and a pretty good understanding of how the system actually works you know really will help you 
you know, make this job quite a bit easier. So thanks for watching. We're going to post this up. It should help a lot of people uh, make this go by a lot quicker. Thanks.